Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Chappell coming to you live from Hollywood, California, home of Primetime Shopping Network. Wilson, I got a big show tonight. I got a huge show tonight. I got an original tar guy. I got a Peter Max original on paper done in 2000. I got a lot of really cool stuff here. But uh, I'm going to start off, Wilson. I want to show people. I uh, I went away for the weekend. No, it's not that went away. Uh, I went to my old college in Ashland, Oregon. That is my son, Ben. And we are standing in front of Hawthorne Hall. I lived there for let's see, two and a half years. But then again, it was 1982. <laughs> so we went there and we walked around and that was another picture of Hawthorne Hall. But apparently, a lot of people haven't forgotten this right here, Wilson, is one side of Hawthorne Hall where my window was. Across the quad was Ivy Hall. And one time I had checked out a movie projector and because I would go to different uh, VFW halls and uh, senior citizen places to show different movies for the college Republicans. And so after I did that, for two days it was in my room and I had to return it on Monday. So a kid in the dorm, not me, Wilson, had a yowza, 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 hubba, hubba, hubba film. And he put it on that projector and he showed the film on Ivy Hall. Now that was a lot of fun for the people in my dorm. It was a co-ed dorm and people seemed to enjoy it. The problem, Wilson, was you could see it from the I-5 exit. And within about 45 minutes, people were getting off the I-5 Ashland, Oregon exit and driving to the co college. And we literally had about 90 to 110 people that didn't live on the campus sitting there watching the movie. And we would have been fine, but a guy named Fred Rappaport figured how to turn the volume up, and that's when I pretty quickly turned it off. Mm. Yeah, I'm an idiot. What can I say? So we got to go to, uh, I went to Ashland, Oregon, and visited my old dorm, and I was so happy uh, to have my son, Ben, that's my son, Ben, standing in front of Baker Hall, where I lived. Oh, that's an awful picture of Ben, but uh, he, he was a voice of reason uh, in Ashland, Oregon. And uh, we had devised a plan that if we run out of money, I will, uh, eh, long story. But anyway, that's Ben near Lithia Creek. And Lithia Creek, folks, actually has lithium in it. Uh, you know, the, the, I believe if you get enough of it, it becomes like a tranquilizer, lithium. But um, anyway, it was a fun trip, and it had changed so much. It was seven years ago I was there last time. And it's uh, very familiar but very different. Enough about me. I want to... I want to show you some art. This is an Alphonse Mucha. This Alphonse Mucha was done by Jack Solomon Jr. And I got to spend a few days with Jack, uh, I think 2006. He owned, he started um, Circle Art Gallery and this right here is an Alphonse Mucha lithograph. 
And what's so incredible about this, this is the museum edition, number six of 35. But what is so important is that raised mucha. Now, that anti-counterfeiting mark cannot be counterfeited. And to hear Jack Solomon Jr. talk about it, he had to fly the director of the Alphonse, M M Alphonse Muka Society from Prague in Czechoslovakia out to Las Vegas, where he had to watch every single piece, every color that was mixed on the oldest press that in the United States that Jack Solomon Jr. Impor imported from Bavaria, Ger Germany. And let me just see. Ashley, did you have that one comp? Ashley just found one to it. We cannot ascertain if it is a. Yeah. Here's one that is on Mooka Foundation right here. But I, same piece. S2 art galleries, uh, pre taps the original was done in 1897. It's a limited edition lithograph, and this is a very low price at $660. Uh, I flew to Prague four years ago, and if they were the MUCA, done by the MUCA Society, MUCA Foundation, they were three and 4,000 after you translated the currency. But this is the only Alphonse Mucha I have. And I, I think he is one of the greatest artists of all time. Not only was he a world famous artist, but he, he kind of owns or helped the Art Nouveau. And many of his images were, were sold and used for in his lifetime for ads, such as this one right here. And every color that you see there was made the same way Alphonse Mucha would have had to have done it. They went to the same uh, quarries to get the pigments for the paint. And Jack Solomon Jr., the nicest guy in the world, said they about drove him crazy. And that what he thought was going to be a uh, little expensive turned out to be incredibly expensive. And they said it's, it's just perfect. I wish I had more of these. Um, Jack Solomon Jr. died, I think, in 2010 or 2012. Here's what I can do. Retail. Uh, well, that's uh, online there, and I can't see their stamp that well. But uh, I'd put 2200 uh, because mine has the anti-counterfeiting watermark which is just about impossible. And that, Jack told me a story about how long it took them to come up with this. They tested it for heat, for steam, for every possible thing. And that just drove him crazy. But when it was done, he was very proud of it. So I'll tell you what. Um, here's what I got. Tell you what I'm going to do. Let's see if anybody's watching me. This is the only S2 galleries or Jack Solomon Jr. MUCA sealed by the MUCA Foundation, numbered by the MUCA Foundation that I have on this planet. 28 by 17 framed. I'll tell you what, $500 to open, $50 increments once we get the open. Uh, there's nowhere on the planet the cheapest price Ashley could find was six hundred and sixty dollars and I believe that's a very an older listing so five hundred dollars to open on a museum edition done by and with the permission and help of the Alphonse Mucha Foundation that would be a steal Matt I got a lot of good art.
Yeah, I got, I got, I got some great art tonight. Is that Chopper? Chopper? No. No, no, no. We have a five hundred dollar open. What do you call that? An ice blended mooka? You're going to be haunted by the ghost of Alphonse. No, I think Alphonse. You know, he designed the currency uh, for uh, Czechoslovakia. $500, one bidder going to Chopper once. This is a tragedy. $500. Going twice. And I hate to interrupt this. Hey, Ashley, did you tell that nice lady about that that, that price she, they wanted on the cruise and to tell, not to pay that? Thank you. All in, all said, that's a steal. Sold to Chopper. That's yours. And uh, Matt, dial 911. There's a robbery. I'll, I'll tell you what, hmm. here's what I want to show you next. Uh. What's that? Yes, I am. And we might have one over there too. Yes. Folks, yes, I have a Basari. This is the coolest Basari, and I don't want to get anybody mad because I let every single person have a chance on this on a, two shows. And we sold all the other ones, and we didn't get an open on this one, and I took it home and hung it in my house. This has been hanging in my house for eight months. This is cathedral. Look at that. Exter excursion. But the way we tell it, it's because of the cathedral. But yes, excursion. Look at this cute little girl. Look at that. Wilson, that is a cute little girl. She is walking around the streets of St. Petersburg, Russia. Maybe she's meeting her mom or grandma or brother or father at the cathedral. But look how warm she's dressed. Look at that. And look. Now, Wilson, this is a, a Basari technique that is second to none. Look at this. Look how he mixes the color to create such depth. Right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna swing it around a little bit. See if you come in close uh, up a little higher in the clouds, you can see it comes a little bit off the canvas, and that is something he learned at the St. Petersburg Academy of Art, and it is stunning. I love this painting. It's been hanging in my house. This is, I don't know, but I think he's got the graphics up. It's called Excursion 2385. Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I saw an ad uh, on art brokerage of a gallery that I was sorry. I like mine better. I'm sorry, but I like Basari's work. And they had one. Not e about this size, actually. They wanted sixty-five hundred dollars, and I saw another one on our brokerage for fifty-two hundred. This is unbelievable. And here's what I'm gonna do, folks. Oh, don't uh, have fun with this. Oh, this hurts. Two thousand dollars to open. I'd up for more. What do you? What you should have told me that before I said two thousand. 2000 to open. I love this piece. 
This is an original oil on Russian canvas. And that's what I like about Basari's work. Let me just sh show you the back side of this, Wilson. Look at the Russian canvas, his signature, everything in Russian. I think he owns in, in St. Petersburg. He is so important as a uh, gentle surrealism. Take a look at that at 2000 to open. Which kind of artist proofs? Oh. Yeah, we have a couple over there. Yeah. Yeah, we got four of them. Tell them the names of the band and we'll see if he wants any of them. At $2,000, nobody wants to open on this. I've done something wrong. Look at that little girl. <laughs> Wilson, you know what she's saying right now? Buy me. Take me. Put me in a warm home. I need a warm home. I'm cold. <laughs> no open. All right. Well, I put that up or get me close and it can be yours. Ugh. Now. Hmm. Tell you what I am going to show you real fast, but I only have. OK, can you put it back there? It's you got to be very it's a it's a hard angle to get it up there. Well, it's not for you. <laughs> it's not all right. Tell you what I do have, and I just, with all of the bank runs that have happened this last week, I, I brought seven of these here tonight. And if you don't own any gold, I mean, folks, first of all, we had Silicon Valley Bank close and they got bailed out then you had credit credit swiss bank lose about 30 percent of their value today this morning and you had one other bank oh signature bank that was a while ago banks are having trouble they don't have what they think they have i joke around i was joking around with matt before the show I always wanted to write a book called No Bid. What happens when you find out a lot of the stuff you bought has no resale value? But real items, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, really rare items always do. This is what was in the Allied fighter planes. Whether you were an American pilot, whether you were a British pilot in the Spitfire, whether you had a Warhawk uh, as an American, that was in your survival kit if you had to bail out, attached to your stomach. There are three nine karat gold rings. Then there are four coins. One is a 20 franc Swiss gold coin. Two of them are two different types of British gold coins. And I think the third one is a French gold coin. All about a fifth of an ounce of gold. So if you got shot down and had to barter your way out of a tough situation, you had something. Now, Ashley... Do you have, because I only got, I only brought seven of these. And I think now more than ever, look at that right there, Wilson. That is a Helvetia 20 franc. Look at that. You know, and it's funny because these coins, these are usually 
the ones I have from the 1920s or the early 1930s, I wonder how many lives this coin might have saved. Uh, and it is just stunning. Now I'm going to show you the reverse right here. Look at that. The Shield of Switzerland. How much gold does this have in it, Patty? This is a 20 franc. And let's see. Wilson, happy birthday again. Point. Oh, that was some other coin. This is 19, my eyesight, point one eight six seven, about a fifth of an ounce of gold. I, I believe this is 1922. Yeah, Wilson, you got good eyesight. You're old and you got a great eyesight. I'm, you're older, I'm old, you're, and you, you, you're in great shape. I had one from the 30s, but most of these are the 1920s, and these are about uncirculated. They 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 look like they're uncirculated, but they're they're they got a few hairlines on them, barely visible to the unmagnified eye. Here is a great example of one right here, and this is before the last. 12, 20 days of gold. Look at that. What do they want for theirs? 500 and $539.50. This is for a 1922, and I got a 1922 there. They are all beautiful AU, about uncirculated, too uncirculated, but I'm going to call them AU. Folks, I only have seven of them. And Wilson, the premium on gold coins in the last three days, it's been liking watching the market. You know, two days ago, the market uh, was up 300 points and closed down 100 points. Today it was down, uh, but anyway, the whole, the whole thing is the bids on these, you just, people are buying and selling so fast. I got a deal, I got seven of them. What do you have the cost in there, Ashley, on my 20 franc gold, Swiss gold coins? I got the item number, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. What, what's the item number? Uh, 2211. Man, if we had a setup, we could have 221100. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I shouldn't do this because people are, the bids, I only have seven of them. They are beautiful coins. Picked them out myself. $495 each. You got point one. What? what is it again? One, one eight six seven. Yeah, a Troy ounce of gold, a fifth of an ounce of gold, just about a fifth of an ounce. But the, the, the real thing is the condition, these are AU to uncirculated, Swiss Helvetia, 20 francs. One gone. I only have seven. Now I got six. Folks, get yourself some gold. Gold has never gone no bid. Say what now? Yes, give me a second. Yes, I'm going to get to that in a second. 
Yeah. Okay, just one. I got six left. I thank you. I love keeping these. I, you know, I bring them. I don't want to compete with my customers, but I have one other Basari right there. And yeah. And, and Patty, you know, it's funny because I always want to sell at the best price and to my customers first. But when they pass on gold, I don't mind because I know it's going to be worth a lot more soon. That's just my feeling. No science. 2389. Look at these two little kids. This is a great Sasha Basari. It's a larger Basari. And you wonder, are they brothers? Are they just friends? They're friends. Now that is the Dievis River that runs through St. Petersburg. Yeah, this is this is a stunning work. And I love how Basari signs it on the front, 2022. He also signs it on the back. And a lot of times titles it in Russian, which I don't know. I think I know Niet. But, uh, and that is what St. Petersburg looks like. I went there in 2011, one of the greatest times I ever had. Opened my eyes to, at the time, was, even though it was communism or based in communism, they were hustling like you've never seen. So uh, what do they say? I'll tell you what, I had the other one up for, this one's a little larger, but I'll tell you what, $2,000 to open. $100 increments once we get the open, but 2000 that's too cheap. Look at that. Sasha Basari is one of the great uh, artists of gentle surrealism. And he's a great guy. I would love to have brought him on the show sometime. He will not fly. You know, if they ever get a train that runs from St. Petersburg to Los Angeles, he'll be here. So, what does your customer say about this one, Ashley? Because I think Sasha Basari's are so cheap. I think he is going to be one of the artists that people remember me for. So looking for 2000 to open. No open once. No open twice. All right. Well, I will move this away. Uh, I'm going to get to Oleg in a second. Hey, you printed that picture, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me, I'll tell you what. Let me, I'll show them now. Early bird special. This is an Oleg that didn't get on the show the other time. This is one of the greatest Olegs I've ever seen. I love the title that Ole came up with this. BC 2467. It is 39 by 56. Yes, 2467. Now I want to get this just right in the light because he titled this. I love it. He grew up in Uzbekistan, which was a Soviet satellite country, but 
way different than Russia. And here's the title, and I don't even let the front touch. Look at that. USSR, the end of utopia. You see, and what he is saying, the end of utopia, is growing up as a kid in Uzbekistan and every other satellite country of Russia until uh, Boris Yel Yeltsin opened it up. They were basically told that the Soviet model was euphoria. And what Oleg did with this is he put the hammer and the sickle, and then he's got the marble platform. He is a geometric artist, uh, uses geometric shapes, a master graduate of the Surikov. But over here, where he signed his name in a, just a pigeon blood red there, he, he put the dust and aged it like the end of the Soviet Union. He did that on both sides. And I thought this was one of the greatest works of Oleg he's ever done. And it is just second to none. Oleg told me, you know, he was born in Uzbekistan and Collector's Edition saw his work when they were in Moscow for something, and they immediately, when they got back to the United States, got in touch with him and offered him to come work for him, for, for Collector's Editions. And Oleg told me how proud he was that he got citizenship, but he said, I earn it, Barry. I, I come on uh, E-something visa, I learn language, I learn history. I pass every test out of American history and language. And uh, I think this is one of the all-time great ones. Master graduate from the Surikov. I only have two Oleg's here. And where is the other picture that... Oh, yes. This is retail. Oleg is one of the few artists I know uh, in the United States. He sold, uh, I said 10, but it turned out to be 12 paintings of his own. Each one, without an art dealer, without a broker, he sold them himself, each one for at least $100,000 each. Oleg Javetin. Collector's Editions kept telling me, Barry, he's back in Russia, and he wasn't. He was living in Southern California. And that's when I finally tracked him down on December 4, 2006. And he was just, uh, we've been doing business ever since. And, you know, to get an idea, some of... Here's Oleg about a year ago in my apartment, and there's my dog, Ginger. Ginger's scared of all people, but with Oleg, Ginger goes, ah, didn't even care. But, all right, don't get me in trouble for this. That was me in 2011. Uh, in St. Petersburg at their equivalent Costco. And for 69 rubles, you could have bought a picture of Vladimir Putin. I just thought that was funny. Uh, now, here at $95,000, and this is 12 years ago on our brokerage, retail 104000 Asking price ninety five thousand. Untitled number one, two thousand and six. 
Here is Sailor's Heart that was originally sold for $44,000 in 2011 on Art Brokerage. And then a little while later, it was sold again for 95000 So I only have two Oleg's. I have this one. Oh, here's, here's another comp. Because these, look at this. This is a 2011 comp, 12 years ago. Man and Woman, painted 1997. 68,000. Now, I also have one that sold, and then they, they uh, uh, last week or whenever I did it, and then the sale got canceled. Doesn't happen much. And I just, uh... now Matt, is there any way that I don't need to hold the picture up that they can just bring up the, What's the name of the one that, woman in brown? Okay. Well, here. If you remember, last week we had a very large Oleg entitled Woman in Brown. What was the, what was the item number on Woman in Brown? It was huge. Yeah, and what, what, what does the size say there? 46 and a half by 43 and a half. 46 and a half by 43 and a half. Yeah. And what do we end up selling it for? Okay. Yeah. So I have these two Oleg's. Are they interested in this? What's that? I'll tell you what. This is the time when I don't even have dish. This is a winner. This is one of the nicest Oleg's I have ever seen. I'll tell you what, I wasn't gonna take a penny less than 55. Watch this. If they say yes really fast right now, $4,400, $4,400. This is one of the greatest, Yeah, and this is one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. This is one that Oleg should have sold for $100,000. This is as good as it gets. Signed on the front, signed on the back. And who's thinking about it, Juliet? Mr. C. I have known Oleg since 2006. He is a very unique individual. I love this piece. I don't even know. I think we showed it briefly at the end of his show, and I took it home. I said, this is one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. I must own this. This is as good as it gets. I was going to have it up for 5500 at the minimum, but I'll tell you what, I told Mr. C, if he says yes real fast, 4,400, I think this is one of the greatest Oleg's Oleg has ever produced. And I love how he calls it USSR, the end of utopia. You see, from 1917 on, Karl Marx and Engel, they started thinking that uh, communism was a utopian system. And then uh, with Boris Yeltsin, it, it, it's no longer. This is a great painting. <laughs> Say what? Yeah, oh, I, I think this is one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. Uh, okay, so... This is, uh, I, I, I call for this, but it's going to be at least 4400 And 
I, w I will work you guys deals. I so I am gonna move these over. Where do we get this from? Oh, right there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Now, here's what I am gonna do. E.M. Zacks. Yes, this one. Yeah, the little girl from Banksy. Look at this. He painted the the frame, the wood. Well, that's canvas. Look at this. BC two four seven nine. Sign Zach's. This is acrylic. Yeah, this is a couple. This is oil and acrylic uh, on canvas. Did this have a title to it? Heart. Yeah, heart. heart. Yeah. Our little heart balloon flew away. And she's trying to catch it. She shouldn't be in that position, but Wilson tripped her. She lost her balloon. Wilson, you own this little, owe this little girl a balloon. Okay. E, uh, E.M. Zachs is becoming so famous. He has shows. Uh, actually, just had a big Las Vegas show. He has a couple shows in Miami. He's a natural taut painter. He has a great agent here in LA that I know. Retail on something like this is for an original. That is a mixed media original on canvas. And uh, if I remember right at the Las Vegas show, the retail was 8,900. I won this size, 8,900. And I have three. And just so you know it's an original, look what he wrote on the back. One of one. You see that in the bottom, Wilson? One of one in black. Yeah. That, and I'm just going to move this one back because this is Zach's number one. Here is Zach's number two. This guy looks happy. And this is BC. Two four seven eight, Mr. Money. Do you like this one, Matt? And I don't know. Did yeah, for Monopoly. Did you notice it, Wilson? Did you notice Matt tonight? He's going gangster. Did you notice it, Ashley? Patty with the chain. He's gangster. He's gangster. He was even looking at cars that looked like gangster cars. Yeah, I like that chain. Um, once again, same story. Same retail to open. Same, same whole set open. Yes. Oh, look at this. And then here, Ashley, could you hand me? This is Happy Dancing, Mr. Gangster Money. Yeah. And over there is just happy. I'm holding all the money, money. So I have three Zacks tonight. Two, four, eight, zero. No, no, no. Two, four, eight, zero. And 
Look at that. 8,900 at uh, the Vegas show is what they were pricing these at. So Liz Price, 8,900. what I only got 14 minutes left on the inner knot and then I get the satellite yes so here's what I'm gonna do on the inner knot uh, any of these three banks uh, Banksy's my gosh I'm looking at that one it looks like a Banksy but it's not it's a heart uh, any of these three Zacks Oh, I'm going to give you an uh, inner knot special. Oh, this is too cheap. In Vegas, they're 8900 Here's what I'm going to do. $1,200 to open. $100 increments once we get the open. I have those three different EM Zacks. He is uh, becoming... Quite the artist. And I just want to show you EM Zach's. Here's some of uh, Maryland fifty six hundred. EM Zach's guitar, 4,200. EM Zach's is a very substantial artist. And let me just see because... Let me move those right there. Here you go. Perspective is everything to artist E.M. Zacks. Zacks creates work that feel alive. E.M. Zacks is a lifetime Los Angeles resident, self-taught artist. According to his website, Zacks loves all kinds of art from a very young age, without borders or genre or style. And like Banksy before him, Zax is more or less anonymous. Details about his personal life are purposely vague, if they exist at all. All right. No open at $1,200. Now, oh, that is so sad. And on the people that called about the bus, sorry, is any, any? Yeah, sold. Which one sold? Friends. All right, well, thank you. And who was that? Is she saying Mr. F? Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Sometimes I don't hear that so well. F and S and... Oh, do you have problems like that when you were a kid, Wilson? No? I had trouble with the letter R. And the second grade at Delaware Trails Elementary School. They took one hour of my life a week and sent me to special class where they made me practice my R's. And the teacher said, don't say R, go er. Whenever you see a word with an R, don't say R, say er. Really? Yes. So what does that look like? A rabbit? No, it's a rabbit. 
And I said, really? <laughs> no, I wasn't that smart back then. But that helped a lot. So no takers on this or the other Basari. Oh, I'll tell you what I got. This BC two four one nine. Look at that. The nineteen thirteen D. Very rare. It is the last one I own. Stay coin. Don't do that. Stay like that coin. Yes. Because the 1913D, where they minted millions of 1924s and 28s. Look at this, Wilson. Look at that minage. 393,500, making it one of the lowest minages. Now, if you were watching us on the other side of the world, Matt, I'm talking Singapore, Hong Kong, don't think I'm crazy, folks, but I have to show the price like that because it's on the other side of the world and everything is upside down. Yeah. You ever been to a place where the water runs the other way? I saw that in Bora Bora. You flush the toilet and it goes the other direction. I think they got mad at me at the ho ho uh, hotel because I kept flushing. No. Yeah. Now, here is on eBay a 1913D. $8,499.99. Right there. Yes. Here. And folks, I had a couple of comps on this. Don't get me going. All right. I got seven minutes till I get this network. What is the top line there? What's on the top line, Wilson, of this piece of paper I got? What's on the top line? A hundred dollar bill. Now if you get a brick of them, which is the next picture, that's $10,000. Now, you take an average height person standing next to this one right here, that's a million dollars in newly printed hundred dollar bills. The one below it is a pallet of newly printed hundred dollar bills and you have a hundred million dollars. Now This right here ten of them together is a billion, but look at this. That is an average size man standing next to all of that pallet pallets. You know what you get there? A trillion dollars. I'm not trying to get anybody mad, but how many times in the last month, two months on the news, have you heard 
people associated with our government or on CNBC or anywhere else talk about throwing around trillions of dollars. And you wonder why things cost so much. I was amazed in Ashland, Oregon to catch a taxi from Medford, Oregon to Ashland, Oregon. All 12 and a half miles cost me a hundred bucks. Well, said 95. Uber cost my son 85. That's why we have inflation. This is one way you can pr pr protect yourself. Now, I had a couple different purchases of the 1913 Denver Met. And that, you see, Denver never struck that great of coins. I'm not getting, I don't want to get anybody mad at me, but when you start talking about MS63 is brilliant on circulate, MS64 is border of gem brilliant uncirculated. Look at that. I'll tell you what. Um, Ashley, what did I have these up for last time? Only 393,500. And this is the only, I got an NGC. Oops. I dropped the mic. And I wasn't trying to, it wasn't like that show where somebody insults somebody and they drop the mic. And folks. On the last coin, I only have four minutes left before dish. 2,000, what did I have? No, 4,300. What would you give me the price, right? 4,395. I was, and on the two Zaxes, that'd be two grand each. Yeah. Say what now? Okay. So what I got it up for? $4,395. Call me. Only 393,500 minute. There is only a hundred and uh, I have the exact managers here. Let's see. Of the entire minute, only nine, uh, 6,900 and and seven have ever graded MS64. Out of all the ones they've ever graded at both services, <coughs> where the 1924, 113,243 have graded MS64. So that's how rare it is. Ah. Oh. I know somebody wants Mr. Money. Yeah. Now. I got 120 seconds. But it. Say what now? Oh. All right. For I just throw you a deal of deals. The banker would push me off the set if he heard what I just told Ashley to tell you. He'd push me. And then I'd have a hypothetical lawsuit against a non-existent banker that doesn't look at all like Mr. Drysdale. From the Beverly Hillbillies? Yeah, you know, okay. Am I on dish yet? Yes. 
What's that? Hello, Dish Network. Barry Travel coming to you live from Primetime Shopping Network here in Hollywood, California. And I have an incredible art show tonight and coin shows. I got uh, some very rare Oleg. I have uh, one Basari left. Oh my goodness, I got a Peter Max that is so luscious. I have one of the most amazing Yitzhak Tarkai original acrylic on canvas I've ever seen. So I got a big show coming your way. I'm on that camera. Yeah. You're trying to trick me up. You see what Wilson does? He goes from that camera, adjusts it, then he, then, then, never mind. It's my fault. Baby steps, Barry. All right. I was showing some EM Zacks, but what I want to show everybody, and yes, EM, I have three EM Zacks, but what I want to show everybody right now is something so absolutely amazing. Be careful with that, the Peter Max. This is an original Peter Max done in 2000. That is acrylic on paper on arches paper. This is amazing. It has a Peter Max registration number. It has everything. Now, Peter Max is well, he turned 84 the other day, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, now, just to show you, he's 85 now. Siri, I'm going to get you. You see how she upstaged me there, Siri, on your phone? Yes. Siri makes me, I know I'm dumb. You don't have to tell me that, Siri. Here is Peter Max a long time ago. Now, Peter Max has a gallery in Manhattan. And that is a Baldwin piano he, he painted. And that is his high limit room, or was, in Manhattan, where if you would buy literally over a year, a million dollars of Peter Max's or somewhere close, he'd give you great prices. Peter Max was very upset that in the late 70s, the Statue of Liberty had been closed down. Here is a unique original Peter Max uh, on paper. Angel with Heart, 2002. Retail, 80000 Asking price, 61300 so Peter Max called his friend Lee Iacocca because he had seen Lee Iacocca pitching Chrysler cars. Together, Lee Iacocca and Peter Max raised over $330 million to refurbish the Statue of Liberty. And in 1984 or 85, uh, Nancy Reagan, Ronald Reagan, Lee Iacocca, and Peter Max were there in New York when they reopened the Statue of Liberty. There's a Peter Max original. And you're going to have to help me out on this one, Matt. I don't know what the price was on the Peter Max airplane. He painted a Boeing uh, Continental Airline 777 Super Jet. Now, this is acrylic and other mediums. Like you can see the big brush strokes of the acrylic. You can see the watercolor he used around there. And this is a very 
Well, a lot of galleries, this is, well, it's a Peter Max unique original. Oh, and it's heavy. Ashley, whoever buys this, we might want to think about reframing it. Because that needs a black frame, wouldn't you say, Wilson? Black or deep gray or dark blue. There's Peter Max. There is the Max registration number. 55507 five, done in the year 2000. I am told but I can't tell you by who, Wilson. You, they'd, they'd torture me again. Now, by a friend of mine who is an auctioneer on a cruise line. I cannot tell you which cruise line, Wilson, because it'll get him in trouble, and then they'll come and torture me. And I'll blame it on you, but no one will believe me, so they'll torture me again. Uh, I'll tell you what, I am told that these that they open the bidding on cruise lines and cruising is back at 45,000 on an original Peter Max acrylic watercolor mixed media on paper, Arches paper. This is one of them that they would have opened up for 45,000. It is very unique. He has many different mediums. I see the acrylic. I believe I can see some oil. I see definitely watercolor, and this is very, very beautiful. And I will reframe that. Hey, Ashley, will they frame it quickly? You'll, you'll, you'll guarantee that? That if I sell this, can you guarantee like five days, seven days, we'll have it in the mail? Can you make them? I, I think you can make them, right? Yeah. All right. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give somebody a deal of a lifetime. Oh, this is too cheap. Too cheap, too cheap. Hey, uh, Matt, how many people are watching me on the Internet? Because Internet or Dish, I'm getting ready to deal a great deal. Why, Barry? You know, I make fun of Wilson all the time. I found out Friday was his birthday. You are in such great shape, Wilson. I, is, I'm no joke there. I mean, I, I was very impressed. Tell you what I can do. This is too cheap. This is crazy money. Look at all the work. This, this piece is 23 years old. It can vote and drink. I'll tell you what. But, Patty, don't get a Peter Max painting drunk. They can get mean. Oh, this is too cheap. 4,500 to open. I'm going to reframe it in either blue, gray, red, whatever you want. This is too cheap at 4,500. This is crazy money at 4,500. This is stunning. That's a $45,000 Peter Max. Yes. I, I do have some Morgan dollars and peace dollars. Give me, give me a little bit of time and I will show them. So what am I doing wrong, Wilson? I have a $45,000 cruise ship price, Peter Max, done 23 years ago, and I offered to open it up at 4500 All right. Matt, I'm going to tell everybody my flat, flat, flat bottom on this. All right. If you just don't want an auction, you just want to buy it right now, 
Oh, this is too cheap. I had to work to get this. Buy it price, $3,900. That is one of the coolest original Peter Max I have ever seen. And Adrian, if it doesn't sell, erase that from the computer. Because many people pay 40, 35, 40, 45,000 for Peter Max's like this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get to those. Yeah. Yeah, I got some Morgan and Peace dollars. They're going to be coming up in a little bit. Got some gold coins. Hey, uh, camera two. Have you pe folks been watching how erratic the stock market has been ever since Silicon Bank uh, failed and the feds bailed them out and Signature Bank failed and the feds bailed them out? Have you watched the Dow trade? Uh, you know, uh, starts up 180, 200 Dow points, finishes down 600. Uh, earlier today, it was down 700, and it came back to be down only 285. But it's been all over the place. Did you see the nice pop in gold? Uh, up $24 the other day, uh, $19 two days before that. That's because people want something real. Something that has never been at zero. Gold will never be worthless. And folks, I have some really cool stuff. But what I'm going to do right now, Ashley, I'm going to let you do the heavy lifting. Because I'm going to do the light heavy lifting. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let's reverse that because... Now, this is an original Tarkai. The certificate was signed by Albert Scaglione, Director, Park West Galleries, Michigan. The following artwork has been examined by Park West Galleries. This is artist Yitzhak Tarkai, A Thought-Filled Moment, 36 by 26. Acrylic painting on canvas, signed in peg pigment, lower right, a unique work. And that was dated May 11th, 2006. This is one of the greatest Yitzhak Tarkai canvas pieces I have ever owned. It is absolutely stunning. These are almost impossible to get. I am so grateful that I got to spend three days with Yitzhak Tarkai. He came on my show, I believe it was 2010. 2000, he died in 2012, so 2010 or 2011. He was telling me, he was tired of traveling because he, he, they sell, in Singapore, they were setting records with Yitzhak Tarkai's work. <laughs> Yitzhak Tarkai was born in Sabatica, Yugoslavia. Now it's closer to present-day Serbia. Uh, there is an acrylic on canvas like mine by European World, Gal European World Galleries, $158,000. Here is a, another one on the cover. 118,000. 
That comp was pulled off in 2008, four years before he died. He died in 2012. Now this is really important, Wilson. I don't know if you can get me next to the painting. Yitzhak Tarkai lived through so many tough things. Born in Sabatica, Yugoslavia, right on the Hungarian border. When he was 11, the Nazis came through his town. Yitzhak Tarkai was Jewish. They threw him in a concentration camp at age 11, the Mathisau death camp, which was one of the worst of all. His job at age 11, late 11 and early 12, was to throw dead bodies on a cart and carry them around. Fortunately, George Patton and the Third Army liberated his camp. He immigrated and went to Israel, where he got a bachelor's and a master's in art. He became one of the world's greatest figurative artists. In 2012, they had his funeral. He was buried um, on the Boulevard of Heroes in Jerusalem. Uh, they planted tree in his name, all kinds of stuff. I'm going to show you. I got a price on this. Uh, how long is Tarkai the the? Here's Yitzhak Tarkai in his own words. It was uh, years ago, some woman came to my show in San Francisco, and she told me, hi, it's very nice to meet you, Mr. Tarkai, that's it. And then he said, thank you very much for your art. And then uh, she went to go. And then I asked her, why you thanks me? You, you bought this piece. I'm the painter, I do my job, and you, you buy it. Why you thanks me? And she told me the picture is hanging in the coffee corner in, in uh, her house. And every morning when she drink a coffee, she, she watch the piece. And she is so happy. And this is the reason she thanked me because it's like uh, I give her the good mood. So. This I do for people, I hope. The best place to be in staying is Tel Aviv. I love Tel Aviv. I think this is the one of the best, 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 best city in the world. You have everything in this city. It's a, not a small city, but it's a very nice city. I live in Holon because I need to, to, to put my head to sleep, but this is only for the usual things. That means but I, what I like, really, this is Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv I like because it's, uh, it's always boiling. The life, life is boiling. Yeah. And you can't find what you saw yesterday. Today is not there. It's changed in the, always. When I start to work and I finish my sketch on the canvas, when I start to paint, I'm not thinking on, about the colors. The color is colors is coming. This is not uh, after some plane, how, oh, what, uh, in this corner, but in other corner. I put the first, uh, first paint on the canvas, and then the other ones is coming 
uh, to compare the, to the before paint. I am optimistic, very optimistic. If this is the best way to, to survive. For me, this is the, the heaven. Now, I'm old man and I can uh, do everything. And I wake up and I get out from the bed by myself and don't need helps up to now, I, I hope. And uh, what I need anymore. So this makes me happy, yes. <laughs> And then everything is a gift after this. Really? This is my optimistic way, yes. <laughs>I think because the people love much more the woman subject. It's some mistake to thinking about it. Starka is a uh, love woman and they paint. I love women, okay, but uh, this is not the reason. <laughs> they prefer to see exhibitions with a woman. The people, they give the way to the gallery what to exhibit. They have landscapes, uh, still life. And the most of the exhibition is with a uh, woman. So why? Because they know the people, the population is like the woman subject. I am very young, so I can wait to be a, in, in better class of artist. First, I think you must to, you have to by self to feeling this if it's good or not, if you satisfy with yourself or not. If not, you have to work and work to be better. If you're happy what you do, be happy. Don't worry. <laughs> but to coming to this very delicate point, where are you? What is your uh, place on the map of the art? I don't know. It's very difficult. I think it's a good feeling when you sell some piece in good price. Yes. Why not? That means the other side is very satisfied with, with your work. I, God help me, I'm a good side. And the people want to buy it, up to now. I don't know what will be later. But I hope it will be good. It will be good. That was Yitzhak Tarkai, 1935 to 2012. Um, he was one of the world's greatest figurative artists as far as painting figures the world has ever known, and it was a big loss. He did me a huge favor after I spent almost three days with him. He told his wife, uh, you know, because they sell the Park West, they sell a lot of places. He told his wife, you always give, his wife's name is Berea, you always give Barry the absolute best price on the planet. And she honored that and always have. I wish I had a hundred of these. I have one. Take a look at that right here. It's a large piece, a cert signed by Albert Scaglione, dated 5-11-06, is when Albert Scaglione uh, authenticated this piece. A lot of places. You know, one thing that got Tarkai 
He loved it, but he, it wore him out was he would fly from Israel, United States, or Israel to Singapore. In Singapore and Japan, his prices were going through the roof. And the last time I communicated with his agent, uh, or and he, his agent talked to Berea, they just, they're gone. And to have something like this uh, that is so great that a lot of places they want 80 or 90,000 on a cruise line unframed, I got it right here. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys a price nobody on the planet can get. It's only because I have, Ber Berea Tarkai has been nice to me because her late husband Yitzhak Tarkai said so many nice things. $12,500 to open. $12,500 to open. $250 increments once we get the open. This is a huge, beautiful acrylic tark eye. Acrylic on canvas with a certificate of authenticity from Albert Scaglione. I have an item number for this. BC2345. Folks, that is so cheap. And that is a perfect Tark eye. Look at that. And what I like about this is you have two women in the background. You have a landscape and cityscape in the background. You have a book she is reading. And he would always put his wife, Berea, usually right in the center. Patty, are they interested in this? No. Get me close, and this can be yours. Look at that. That is real wealth, folks. With banks fall, failing and bizarre stuff happening, Yitzhak Tarkai, who has lived and died and changed the way we look at art. And you have a chance to get something, a piece people charge seven, eight, ten times more right here. So, Wilson, come on back up to me. I hope you give this a lot of thought because I am going to move on to something else right now. Um, yeah. I'm going get, to get to those in a second. Um, yes, I have gold coins. I have St. Gaudens. I have Helvetia Swiss, but here's what I'd like to do. Um, how long is Oleg 1? Oleg 2. How long is Oleg 2? <laughs> I can't keep leaning, Wilson. Fantastic. Hang on before you start show it. I want to show you something. He is one of the greatest artists I've ever met. I think he will be one of the most valuable artists I have ever sold to anybody. His name is Oleg Javetin. This is, give me a second, this is the first time I met Oleg Javetin face to face, December 4, 2006. Oleg Javetin was born in Uzbekistan, a, a Soviet satellite country of Russia. Long way away, 
but still under Russian control. When he was 16, he started at, in Uzbekistan, and by the time he was 18, had a four-year degree in art. When he was 19, he did something very few people could do. He got accepted into the Surikov, one of the toughest colleges in the, on the planet. It's in Moscow, Russia, and very few people actually graduate or even get accepted. It's like the hardest school to get into. Now, Oleg got a master's degree in painting from the Surikov by using geometrical shapes and making it Russian romance. Now, what I am going to do, Ashley, could you please move this Tarkai back over there? Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, give me one second. You. That was Ashley. No, that was Mr. Money. It's all right. Yeah, it's not. Didn't hit the Tarkai or the Max. No. Uh, it's okay. So, give me one second. So, yeah, just be careful standing that one up. Give me a second. So, Oh, hang on, uh, hang on, Patty, I'm walking over to you right now. That is a great Oleg, hang on. Uh. Oleg Javetin got his master's degree from the Surikov. And Oleg Javetin is one of the few artists that himself, and he's a, he's a very interesting guy. This was about a year ago at my apartment and there's my dog, Ginger, not scared at all. Everybody else, Ginger runs from Oleg. It's like, I thought he was gonna take my dog. Oleg just followed him around. Uh, I mean, Oleg, Ginger just followed Oleg around. Now, here, Oleg, I watched him sell 12 of his originals himself, no agent, all for over $100,000. Here is one of his pieces. It was on our brokerage about a, 12 years ago for 68000 Here is uh, a great example. Here was Sailor's Heart that sold, I think, in the $40,000 price range. Then a few years later, came up for auction or something, and it sold for $95,000. And uh, that is how valuable Oleg is. Here is one of my favorite pieces. Look at this, untitled. Retail, 104000 asking price, 95000 Master graduate of the Surikov in Moscow. Now, here's what Oleg is really proud of. You know, Oleg is a very interesting guy, Wilson. He... Um, he got, once he joined with Collector's Editions, they saw his work in Moscow. They brought him to the United States on a visa. And I don't know, an E-1 or something visa. And then he got citizenship. And he, he, and he was very proud of this. He said, I got citizenship. Uh, I am two citizenships, Russian and American. I learned English. I learned history. I took all the tests. I studied very hard for it, and he can pull up historical facts from about anywhere. When you ask about anything in the United States, it's like, bam. This is one of the greatest works I've ever seen by Oleg Shevetin. It's entitled USSR, The End 
of Utopia. The reason he named it this was when he was growing up as a kid in Uzbekistan, a satellite country of Russia, be it it's uh, uh, 1,500 miles away, growing up they would tell you that Russia, that is euphoria for man, collective society, all for the betterment of the state, Lenin, Marx, Stalin. And then when Boris Yeltsin opened up the gates and it fell apart and broke into so many different countries, Oleg, and I think this is one of the best ones he ever did, uh, the end of euphoria. And what he did was he painted every geometrical shape of these Russian people. And you got the triangle going here. You got a rectangle. You got a circle. You got the hammer and sickle here. And the hand, which Oleg paints perfectly. I got in a little argument, not argument, discussion once when I said, and then you paint the hand. Barry, you ever paint hand? You ever take anatomy? Do you know how many directions just this one finger can move with knuckles? You know, and he just, he said, so don't ever go up to Oleg. So, and then you paint the hand. No, no. He, but anyway, I like what he does here. He makes it like it's ending. It's, it's like spider webs and roots. He signed it in pigeon blood red there. And he's got these, this, you can tell it's ending. And you have this beautiful plain, like a marble table there. And he has, this is one of his greatest works. Beautiful. If I were going to price this, and knowing Oleg, he's a great guy. I, I watched him sell in a year or two, a couple of years, 10 paintings, each one for over 100000 Not to a gallery, not to a broker, just picking up the phone to the different customers that had always called him. I'll tell you what, retail on this, in my humble opinion, at least $85,000. I love it. I love how he wrote the title on the back. And he, so you got it signed on the front and the back. And this is a larger piece. Yeah. I'm going to give you guys one heck of a deal. Oh, this is too cheap. You know, of all the artists I've handled, and I've handled quite a few, you know, whether it's Guillaume Magellet or Royo when I bought out uh, the Triad collection, like Prima Lucci that I was selling for 1200 that are now 22000 and or Paseo uh, Hacienda del Mar, you know, that I was selling for 900 that are 19000 now. This is as good as it gets. And Russian contemporary romanticism. Tell you what I can do on this. Oh, this is cheap, too. $5,000 to open, that is too cheap. $5,000 to open, $250 increments once we get the open. You are talking about one of the all-time greatest artists ever. I just want you to see it with the love how he put the hammer and sickle there. And about 10 or 12 years ago, I watched Oleg paint briefly I mean, he's very diligent. He's thinking. He's sketching. Even though he's got 50% of the painting done, he'll have an inch and a half, and he'll make 12 sketches in his mind how to continue the painting and finish that inch and a half before he finishes the whole painting. This is one of his best. And I love the name of it, USSR, The End of Utopia. 
the breakup of the Soviet Union. And he painted this in 2022. That is Oleg number one. I'll tell you what, before I show you Oleg number two, how long is, if you meet Oleg on this docudrama I made, how long is it? How long? Adrian? Oh, checking? No, I'm going to go with savings. <laughs> oh, that's a vivid painting. Um, I'm going to show you a brief little filming I made on Oleg. I made a couple of them. This is called Oleg 2. And you just tell me when it's ready. Okay. Is it ready or do you just mean you're going to tell me? It's ready. Take a look at this. It's about 10 minutes. You'll love this. My name is Oleg Zhvetin. I was born in the uh, former Soviet Union. I was born in a small town close to Tashkent city. Tashkent is a pretty big city in Central Asia. It used to be part of Soviet Empire. But when I was grow up, I never knew all of, all of that stuff. I just <laughs> grew up. When I was grow up, uh, I don't know the difference between socialism or communism or capitalism or anything else, all the political crap. I just grew up as a little boy, that's it. I, I just grew up, I love uh, to see flowers, nature, play Indians, actually we play American Indians. <laughs> My earliest memories, I just uh, love to draw. I, I draw on the furniture, on the walls, uh, on the paper. If I have a piece of paper, I, I just draw. My family, we have three kids. I used to have sister older than me and brother um, younger than me. My father is a simple engineer. Actually, he was chief engineer in the furniture factory. And uh, we have simple life. I'm thanks, thankful to my parents because they was educated actually behind their the limits, behind what they need to know in their lives. We have a great library, great library. So I, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of American artists, American writers too. And I, I was just a simple boy, just uh, read a little bit. Uh, the, the important probably we don't have uh, much TV. That time, Soviet Union, Russia at the time, we had just three channels was controlled by government. And we have just a simple corny movies, probably not much news because they don't show news at all. Here in the United States, uh, people always stressful. Why? Because they always see the horrible news. Somebody killed here, somebody uh, has a drug overdose, somebody got a uh, car accident, terrorism here, terrorism here. Always stressful news. Back in Soviet times, no, no, no. Even if Russia has some kind of trouble like this, they never show on TV. They never show on TV. They, they always show positive news. Like, let's say, uh, that farmer got thousands uh, more cows, and that's it. <laughs> the whole news like this. <laughs> If I couldn't paint, uh, I have to make somehow my living. I don't know. I would be probably homeless. Uh, I cannot do anything else. I cannot do anything. Uh, my early age, when I was like 17 years old, and I was in uh, art school, but I cannot make any money from my art. My father was chief engineer in furniture factory, so 
One time I came to him and I tell to him, look, I, I have to make some extra money for my clothes, for my girlfriends. For... He said, okay, you can go in my factory and work as a simple blue color factory workman. You can make maybe about 200, 300 bucks a month. And I try did that. I, I go to the factory and work about three months. And it was so hard and it's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. It's not because it's hard labor. Uh, I'm not afraid of hard labor. It's uh, what uh, stopped me to do it anything. I start to understand I don't like it. I just don't like it. I start to understand I have to stick what I like. What I, I like to paint and that's it. I'm going I'm to be an artist. But I joined the Surikov Art Institute called Vasily Surikov Art Institute when I was um, um, 20 or 21. It's very, very difficult school to get into. Why? I tell you why. Because in Soviet times, to join that school, a lot of, a lot of competition to join that school. Why? Because it's, uh, let's say, just, let's say, take huge megapolis like Moscow. 10 million people live in Moscow. And uh, in Moscow, we have probably two or three schools high end like this, no more. And 200 million people in country. And let's say how many thousands of artists who want to join and to be an artist and get that high, uh, high end excellent education. Thousands of people. So when you go to there, you, you have to show your artworks. You have to show your skills, your education, and you have to pass it through examination. So when you compete, uh, you, you, you have to take some tests in art, in, in uh, drawings, in composition, in paint, in uh, art history, in uh, language, in a uh, little bit in philosophy. And every test, you have, you have to have excellent grades. If you don't have excellent grades, you just lose. That's it, because school has to choose uh, the, the most excellent person to study. Uh, you have to show real paintings, not photographs, not for portfolio, real paintings. I, so I, I, I take my paintings, I put them in a train, put myself in a train, travel three days. It's big, Russia is a very big country. So from south to Damascus, I travel about three days in a train, uh, take some taxis, so show the paintings real paintings to the persons who are reliable, who make making decisions. So they can allow it to put you compete. A lot of guys show the paintings, it doesn't matter. They, they can see the paintings and they say, no, no, we cannot accept you. We cannot accept you even to try compete. So first step, you have to show the paintings and they can see the paintings and probably they can see some potential inside. Uh, they can say, yes, we can allow you to start competition. In Russia, in Soviet times, artists cannot paint even human being or any cityscape or landscape or any nature. It was against uh, religious rules. Simply, I can have consequences. For example, if I paint something like I paint now in Russia, back in Russia, I could be arrested. It's simple as this. Why? Because I don't paint some stupid portraits of some proletarian guys or some party propaganda. Uh, what they actually tell you to paint. A KGB guy come to you and say, okay, you have to paint here Lenin or here some Karl Marx and here some revolutionary guards or whatever. And uh, of course, a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I paint that. And they paint, they got their salary, and that's it. But if you don't do it, you don't paint, you paint something else, you, it, very simple. They can arrest you, they can abuse you in jail, uh, torture. It's very simple like this. Can spend, let's say, 10, 7 years just for nothing, for saying something, or paint some paintings or create some music what doesn't suit to the music of 
communistic taste. I just have to change my situation around me so I don't want to go to prison. Why? Because I want to paint certain paintings. It's simple as this. So I moved to United States. And amazingly, I never was arrested for my paintings. <laughs> Even more, I was appreciated. Here, public start like my paintings. Hi, folks. Yeah, that was Oleg in his own words. Uh, I have met a lot of artists. I've been doing this for 32 years. You know, whether it's Michael Schofield, Guillaume Agile, youngest living artist to ever be accepted in the Perma Archival Collection of Louvre, Oleg Javetin, master graduate of the Surikov, the late Yitzhak Tarkai. I've met a lot. And I keep meeting artists. This is one of the greatest paintings I've ever had for sale, period. End of story. The way he is summed up, and most of you have seen Oleg's where it's a, a woman or it is, uh, or Sasha Basari, a great other Russian artist where you're looking at the eyes, telling a story. Oleg uses geometrical shapes mixed in to what is usually Russian Romanticism. And he made this darker in color and called it the end, USSR, the end of euphoria. And I think it is one of the most brilliant paintings he has ever done, period. I have watched him sell paintings for over $100,000. And you know, this is one of the nicest ones. Look at the depth. Look at all the different geometrical shapes, whether it's a rectangle, triangle, circle, sphere, square. They're all in there. I'll tell you what, don't lose this one. This is as good as it gets. Oleg and, and, and uh, I'll tell you what, Wilson, get me on camera here. Look, I'll be dead and gone. You'll still be walking around, Wilson. 10 years from now, the art world is always going to remember Oleg. 20 years, 50. He has changed the way we think about art and graduates of the Surikov. He has added so many layers and dimensions. And he, he, he's a genius. And, you know, if you talk to him, you wouldn't think so. I mean, he's very common, down to earth, doesn't talk all that much. But I'll tell you what I can do. Please. Don't lose this one, $5,000 to open on one of the single greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. I don't have any more Oleg's coming. I have one that I don't have here, but I'll show you a picture of, but this is one of the greatest Oleg's I have ever seen. Love that title, The End of Euphoria. It is as good as it gets. You know, Oleg, before COVID, Oleg was working with a classmate, a, a lady that also graduated from the Surikov two years before him. And in Moscow, they were getting $250,000 a painting. And they would get 150000 down as an advance. And you are talking one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. And I have priced this at an amazing price. This is as good as it will ever get. This is stunning. And he's usually very secretive about it, you know. And finally, you know, after talking with him for hours and sometimes days on, you know, calling him and working. Yeah, he sold a painting for a quarter of a million dollars, being gone. No open at 5,000. Well, I just wanted to show you that. And uh, yeah. on this. Who is it? Ah, uh, 
Is he going to take good care of this? Mr. S, will you take good care of this? Is he watching me? Yes. Is he going to take good care of it? No, Barry, I'm not. No, he is. Yes, done. Sold to Mr. S. Take care of this painting. It will take care of you. This is possibly the single greatest Oleg. I had the three graces that I had kept in my house. I, I sold that for 18000 the three graces. This is better. Sold to Mr. S. Thank you. That is gone. Now I have one other Oleg left. And... Thank you, Mr. S. That's as good as it gets, Mr. S. And once again, I had the three graces, and my daughter got upset when I sold it because it had been in our house. It went for 18000 and that was supposedly, eh, never mind, but when, when times were a little tougher, I have this painting. I sold this painting a week ago or two weeks ago, and, and they canceled for a couple reasons. I believe medical. And what was the item number on this, Ashley? This one was 2468. 2468. It's a rather large painting. It was textured. It's all boxed up and ready to be shipped. But for some reason, oh, I, I know the reason. But, uh, and it is uh, 46 by 36 if I... Remember right, it is stunning. All the texture on this painting, what is it? 46 by 43. It was textured, it was unbelievable. Um, you know, this is a, a monster of a painting and I can always just have it brought here next week from our shipping facility. But uh, if, if uh, Give me an off. The, I'll give you an off the air price. Call the operators. It is. It's. It's a stunning painting. And while you're thinking about that, I want to put th this up right here because it don't get any better than this. And I'm going to reframe it anyway. So, no, I didn't damage it there, but th look who signed the bottom there. Right there. Peter Max, the registration number, 2000. There is the official Peter Max archival registration number. So at Max Galleries, they took a picture of this and they always keep it on file. This is an original painting on paper. This is so unbelievable by Peter Max. It was done in 2000. Look at that. I can see the acrylic you can see the heavy use of acrylic right there, the purples, the yellows, the tangerines mixed in all right there. Then here, he's used some watercolors. He's done everything, every medium you can think of. And I called my friend that works on a cruise ship, but I can't mention the cruise ship or the company, and he gets 45000 They give you a few drinks, get you liquored up, show it for two or three days on the cruise, tease you with it, and somebody pays forty-five grand. I don't want anywhere near that. Mine has a Peter Max registration number. Mine has everything you need on it. And this is a deal of a lifetime. I hope you're out there tonight. Because that is uh, an original Peter Max. And I was showing you comps <coughs> of some of the other Peter Maxes. Hang on. I know I make a mess everywhere here. But 
Give me a second. I just had it. They, that could be them. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Angel with heart. Retail eighty thousand. Asking price six sixty one thousand three hundred. And that was twenty fifteen. The painting was done in twenty two. Oh, that was twenty twelve. And the painting was done in two thousand and two. Here is <laughs> the Peter Max Galleries in Manhattan. <coughs> Peter Max is 85 years old. You see all those paintings to get in there. You pretty much have to spend a hundred grand with them over a couple months. He hand painted that Baldwin piano. Here is Neon Man Blue. This is a comp from 11 years ago. 62,000 is what they wanted 11 years ago. And here is the American flag version eight. Number 31, painted in 2002, 60,700. Here is a Continental Airlines plane he painted. I don't know what that's going to cost you, but that 777 Super Jet is going to be expensive. Yeah. Peter Max. A lot of people don't know this, but he was slightly depressed in the 70s because he used to be able to go to the Statue of Liberty and had been closed down. And he had seen Lee Iacocca doing car commercials in the late 70s, and he knew Lee Iacocca. He called him up, and together Peter Max and Lee Iacocca raised $330 million to refurbish and reopen the Statue of Liberty. It happened in the early 80s. Ronald Reagan was there. Nancy Reagan was there. Nancy Reagan invited Peter Max to the White House where they painted Statues of Liberty on the White House yard on paper. And uh, there's a big celebration when they did reopen the Statue of Liberty. That was Peter Max is one of his greatest claims among many. Here you go. That's an original Peter Max acrylic. I think some oil and some watercolor on paper. My buddy gets 45 grand for these. Watch this. I'm going to throw out a price that is a crazy price. Should I auction it or throw out a price? What would you do, Patty? Auction. I can give you a, an insane price. If anybody asks you where you got this, tell them this slightly pudgy guy on TV. His name is Gary Upchurch. <laughs> All right. Now, my real name is Jose. No, my name is Barry Chapel. Um, this is too cheap. And this is bottom, bottom, bottom. Thousand eight hundred to open, two hundred dollar increments once we get the open. That is a crazy price. If my friend, who works as an auctioneer on a cruise line, saw me do that, he'd go, "What are you, an idiot?" And I go, "No, I just always have the best prices anywhere on TV." That's a an original Peter Max. It has its Peter Max ID archival number. It was done in 2000.
That's too cheap. Okay. That's too cheap, Matt. That, that is an original Peter Max. It's got the archive number, everything. Open. All right, we have the open. And who is the customer, Patty? Sandra. Hi, Sandra. How is she doing? All right. Sandra, I got to spend three days with my son in Ashland, Oregon. We wandered around the old dorm I used to live in. At, it used to be Southern Oregon State College, but after I left, they changed the name to University of, uh, University of Southern Oregon. Southern Oregon University. Let me get that straight. And the dorms I was trying to break into, Patty, had been closed for asbestos. And I'm sitting there pulling on the door. 30, where are we at? 38. 38. You're going to reframe it, right? Yes, I'm going to reframe it. I would suggest uh, a black or a deep blue. 38 under, go on once. Thirty-eight under going twice. Okay, I'm gonna give Frank a second. Thank, hang on, Sandra. They're pulling at me. Once. Twice. I don't want to get Sandra mad at me. Sandra likes me. Hang on. All right. Well, your current bid is held by Sandra at 3,800, looking for 4,000. 3,800 going once, going twice. Gotta move, Ashley. Wait, what does he say? Okay. All right, I got, I'm not going to get everybody mad at me. Uh, no, they're going to get mad at me. Sandra's getting mad at me. 3,800. Once. Anybody going to make it four? 3,800 twice. Hang on. Let's give fair. And final warning. What do they say? Sold to Sandra. I'm sorry, Ashley. I got to be fair to everybody. No, I had to. It's not wrong. You think that was wrong? What do you think? No. No, now she's going to get mad at me. She got it. This is one of the greatest tar guys I've ever seen. BC 2345. Sandra, hey. All right, here we go. Now we are looking. I got comps at one hundred eighty thousand. 
you have an original Yitzhak Tarkai. Yitzhak Tarkai was born in Sabatica, Yugoslavia, I believe in 1935. Now, Yitzhak Tarkai Let me just show you a few pictures here. And here is World European Galleries. 158,000 and that comp was made in 2008, four years before he died in 2012. Yitzhak Tarkai Is one of the was one of the world's leading figurative artists. Here is a picture of me with Yitzhak Tarkai. I got to spend three days with him. He was telling me how he was glad to be in and in L.A. But he was telling me he was a little tired because he was flying a lot from Jerusalem to Singapore. They loved his art in Singapore and Japan. And so he was always on the road. Here's a picture that I, I really like because he, he when he left, this is day three or right before uh, his, his last night here, he told his wife Berea a lot of nice things about me. And he said, you make sure Barry gets the best price always. He was an amazing guy. He survived the Mathisau death camp where his job at age 11 was throw dead bodies on a cart. Fortunately, Patton uh, liberated that camp. He immigrated to Israel where he got two degrees in art. And when he died in 2012, he was buried on the Boulevard of Heroes. This is an amazing work of art. This is a Yitzhak Tarkai. So few. It comes with a certificate. Now, Wilson, I am going to turn this painting around so you can I'm being so careful. Signed by Albert Scaglione. And he guarantees this is an authentic, original, acrylic, on canvas, Yitzhak Turkai. Look at that. Now I had this up at 12,500. But I want to give everybody a chance here. What do you think? Is Melvin interested in this? Tell you what I'm going to do. I love this painting. It's one of the nicest Tark eyes I've ever seen. Ten thousand five hundred to open. 
$250 increments once we get the open. An original acrylic on canvas done by Yitzhak Tarkai, authentic authenticated by Albert Scaglione. And this, this is an amazing painting. Folks, Yitzhak Tarkai is in galleries in Japan, in Israel, in the United States, in Hong Kong. Buria, his wife, and Modi, his agent. I mean, every time uh, he get back from Singapore, Japan, or New York, they'd say, we got to go back. He's got to go back. And it was just exhausting him. And, and this is an amazing painting at 10500 I can't replace it. I can't even come close. It was only because Yitzhak Tarkai said the nicest things to his wife, Buria Tarkai, and he told her, always give Barry at the best prices, offer him the Barry first, and to have something of this caliber in a market where Yitzhak Tarkai's around the world are hundreds of thousands of dollars. I could only imagine on a cruise ship, this would be 80, 100, 120 to open. And I got a great price up there at 10, five. I could even, I'll, I'll, I'll sharpen my pencil, turn on my calculator, but let's make a deal on this because this is a once in a lifetime piece. It's stunning. I asked him once, uh, he was taking his watch off and underneath his watch was the uh, tattoo, that's not a tattoo, the number they tattooed on his wrist at the Mathisau death camp. And I asked him, I said, do you ever think back I mean, I can only imagine and I can't even come close. Do you ever think back to that? And Wilson, I want to stand up when I tell you what he said to me. He says, I said, do you ever think about that? Do you ever let your mind? He says, no, Barry. He says, that's why you always see me taking pictures or drawing. I cannot allow my mind to think about them for a second. If I do, they win. They will never win, Barry. End of story. Never brought it up again with him. And to have had the honor of three days with him. And who is that? Um, Mr. Ooh, we're getting close. Hang on. And if I apologize. I'm, I'm going to wobble over there like a weeble. They sold those when I was a little kid. Weebles wobble, but they never fall down. people but that's a can they can they make it happen it is absolutely stunning it is remarkable I have seen three or four original Tark guys that is the nicest one I have ever come across that's why it was hanging in my house and I decided to bring it here it is stunning All that. Look at that. I'm looking at the monitor 20 feet back. It's beautiful. 
I got to talk about it like I used to talk. She's gorgeous. <laughs> hey, you, you're looking at it too. Hang on, what does he say? think we're working on this. Uh-oh, I didn't do it. You saw me. I was nowhere around. I think this might be sold. Ashley is working on a deal right now. And while we're working on that deal right now, I want to show you something, folks. I watched... This is the last Tough Date Saint. Well, it's not the last, but it's the one I brought tonight. This is a 1913D. Is that sold, Ashley? Is that gone? Total manage 395. What? It's sold. The Tarkai is gone. Three hundred and ninety-three thousand five hundred, making it one of the lower managers in the Saint Gaudens series. This was mounted in Denver. I don't want to get people in Denver mad at me, but Saint Gaudens in Denver didn't seem to get the strike it got in in Philly or San Francisco. I mean, but anyway. That is a just a beautiful coin. Only 393,500 have ever been struck. And when you start, look at the reverse, the sun rising on a new nation. This was first cast, started releasing these in 1907, but um, Augustus St. Gaudens didn't leave to see, live to see the actual release. He died in August of 1907, but had been sick all summer. And to get something like this, oh, you stay coin. I've had enough out of you. Are they, that's not coming to, there you go. So what I got to do How's that, Wilson? Or I, I can even lower it a little. No, I can't. Yeah, everybody's seeing this. Wilson, I got the manual dexterity of a possum. No, a possum has more manual dexterity than me. All right. Now, I want to show you something. Do, 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 do. I want to show you something here. Give me one second. Here it is. No, it's not. Give me a second. I keep losing my paperwork, Wilson. All right, that's old legs, but they're gone. All right, hang on. What the heck could have happened to it? Ah, right here. I'm getting close, yes. Look at this. 1913D. PCGS MS64. 7,850 dollars. I have an NGC here. And the total Populations, according to NGC, look at this, uh, of all grades of 1913D, from fine to MS6, 7, or 6, 8, 
They've only graded 6,907 in MS64. That's NGC, PC, GS together. Compared to the 1924s, where they've graded 113,243 in 6.4. This is a rare coin. And I think it's BC 2419. We have already put that up. I only have one. This is a rare coin. It's always going to be a rare saint. Hey, Matt, I have not been showing the manual dexterity. I normally do quick on my toes. Oh, Ashley's going to get it. <laughs> she knows I'm going to fall down with that big painting. Thank you, Ashley. All right. What did I have this up for? Forty-three ninety-five. Get me close. It's the last one I have. Nineteen thirteen Denver Mint. I have three Zaxes coming up. I have some Morgan dollars coming up. Look at that. I don't mind holding this coin forever. I actually, I think I've underpriced it in the last four months. I have seen there's such a run on tougher date, $20 St. Gaudens. And to have this is just stunning. So I don't mind owning it. Now I'm not gonna be like Charlton Heston saying, you're gonna have to pull it out of my cold dead hands. No, I, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> you don't have to, you know, I don't have to be dead, but uh, that, is one of the coins I want to show you. This is the last Sasha Basari. It's called the Excursion. This is beautiful. Sasha Basari's, all you got to do is look in that girl's eyes. And somehow, almost magically, you know that little girl. She's looking right back at you. She knows you, you know her. And that is the magic of Sasha Basari. Now, while you're looking at that Sasha Basari, I am going to try, should I guilt people? It didn't work on me. Uh, my mom always tried guilting me. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, folks. I got a deal for you here. Somebody give this little girl a warm home. Look at it, she's wandering the streets of St. Petersburg on an excursion. Boy, that is a gorgeous painting. The amount of texturing Sasha did in these oranges and purples and cream colors up here is just every inch of that Wilson. That is as good as it gets. And what I can do for you guys, this, is, this has been hanging in my house. I love this piece. I just thought he really, Sasha, all of his work, he is one of the leaders of gentle surrealism in St. Petersburg, Russia. And what I can do here, tell you what, uh, 
$2,000 to open. If you go online or if you go to our brokerage, you will see most of the any Sasha Basari's 7,500 to 9,000. There is a gallery in Miami. What's that? 2385. You sure it's not 2345? Aha. Uh -huh. Folks, Sasha Basari is a master of what is known as gentle surrealism. Every single Basari I get sells, bing, gone. And this one, the mixing of colors, is second to none. All right. Get me close to two. I love this one. I don't mind taking this and putting it back on my wall. Look at this little girl. She knows me. And look at that little babushka she's got on her. Have you ever owned a babushka? Or is that the type of a woman? I don't know. But look at her. She's just on a little exhibition around the streets of St. Petersburg. And he has picked the hardest colors of light to, to, to reflect this. This is stunning. So I hope you're out there. Stunning. Get me close. I, I kept this one. I offered to my customers first, and when nobody took it, I uh, I took it home, and I I was it was hanging out my wall. And I'm going, hey, I want to have something really special. This one is just a blazer of a basari. So I hope you're out there. Okay. Let me know, because I promised somebody, and I have them right here. All right. That is Oleg, yes. Right here. Okay. No interest. All right, folks. I have six left. After this last week of seeing such gyrations in the stock price of the Dow, watching Signature Bank close, watching Silicon Valley Bank close, watching the government get involved and bail them out, you need something real, and that real is gold. Hey, Patty, right back there is a little stand that I can put some of these on. I have six of these left. Oh, they caught your head, Patty. No, they didn't. I just You did good there, Patty. Isn't that a pretty painting? It's beautiful. Look at that little girl. There you go. Thank you. I have six left. These are AU to UNC. $20 Swiss francs. Most of them are in the 1920s. A couple 1922s and 19... Uh, a few in the 1920s. I got a couple in the 1930s. I only have six left. And they are stunning. I even show you a good comp on these. 
if you don't want or have the urge to own gold after all that you saw in the last seven trading days and watching things get imploding one after another look at that now I want to give you a a comp on this right here this is on eBay and this is a tough 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 comp to beat uh, Helvetian Swiss franc five hundred and thirty nine dollars and fifty cents mine are in the 1920s might have one or two 1930s but they are beautiful they are how much gold in these patty point one eight six seven if if you ever watch any of the old world war ii movies when there is an air war in the sky i'm going to show you the reverse on this one allied pilots next to their parachute had an emergency survival kit if they were shot down and had to parachute into germany or france or look, uh, well, there's some uh, in the border of uh, uh, Netherlands, Austria. They gave you a survival kit. You got three nine carat gold rings. You got a $20 Swiss franc, uh, 20 franc gold franc. You got a couple British sovereigns, you got a French franc, all to help you barter your escape if you need to. Those Swiss francs in the 1940s saved so many people's lives, helped them get to freedom. What is the item number on these Swiss francs? 20 franc, yes. What is it? 2211. I have six left. I have beat every ad that I've shown you from eBay. Can't believe I can price them at this. $495. Folks, there has been a run on these. That's approximately a fifth ounce of gold. A lot of times you see people, these are all scuffed up. Mine are about uncirculated to uncirculated. Yeah. Retail was five five ninety five six nine. No, I got one right here. Five thirty no 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 no. That's that's wholesale. They go wholesale price. My cost, I'm selling to you for four hundred and ninety five dollars. Retail is usually about seven ten, six eighty to seven hundred and ten. I only have six left. Get yourself some gold. And I, I don't want to be the naysayer, but fortunately, I have two degrees in the dismal sciences. I have a bachelor's degree in economics I got from what used to be Southern Oregon State College. Now it's University of uh, Southern Oregon. I also have a master's degree in economics from the University of Nevada, Reno. You don't cure inflation like we have. It's going to be a big problem. It's nowhere near killed. It's just getting going. Get yourself some gold. So I have that. I have the 1913D, and if you want to have some fun, oh, damn, I forgot these.
I also have Morgan Dollars. I have Brilliant Uncirculated. Morgan Dollars here. Ooh, look at that. That's a little proof like on that one. I have Beautiful. That's an 1887 P. I'm going to put you right down there. Here's an 1886. They were struck from 1878. They, they stopped in 1921. Hang on, I'm trying to get the right coin here. 1878 to 1904, then they came back for a year in 1921. Look at that. Nice proof. Yes, I have a grand total, and I'll work you a deal. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Item number 2475. I got about 30 brilliant uncirculated. Mixed date Morgan dollars. Look at the reverse on this baby. Wow. There's some proof like coins in there, near proof like. I know I shouldn't, should be wearing gloves. They are right. I am wrong. Look at the reverse on this one. This is an 1885. Look at that, Wilson. Look at that. Look at that. 1885, 1985, it'd be 100 years. To 2000, it'd be 115 years. 115 plus 23, 115, 5, 35, 138 years ago, Wilson. They struck this coin. And you see that little O? In between the D and the O, that's a met mark from New Orleans. Now, Ashley, what have I been selling my Morgan dollars for? 40000 no. And these are beautiful. I only have about, uh, I, don't know, I got, I got, I got enough. They're brilliant uncirculated. $71 each? You know the price of these has been ticking up every single day? I mean, silver was all over the place, closed up eventually. You're talking $71. These are not VG. These are not about uncirculated. These are... Unk, MS-62s, few MS-63s, nice mix of dates and mint marks. $71 each. And Ashley, can you give them a discount if they buy 10 of them? No? <laughs> yes, we can give you. If you buy a roll of 20, we we'll even give you a, a, a nice discount. We always give nice discounts. We don't give mean discounts. That's my competitors. You know why, Patty? Why? They're mean. Uh, they're mean people. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're the ones, and I'm just speculating. I can't prove this yet, Matt, but I think they're the ones that did Little Red White Riding Hood in. Yeah, she was just happy walking through the forest. She ran into my competitors. Bam, gone. 
I believe that happened, but I can't prove it. Do you know anything about it, Wilson? The little red riding hood caper? No? Okay. Call me on these. Call me. I have one tenth ounce. I got tenth ounce gold coins. I got the St. Gaudens. I got American. I got uh, 20 franc Swiss coins. I got a Sasha Basari on the easel. I got three Zach's originals. And I got 14 minutes left. All right. All right, I got other stuff. I'm going to put my Zacks back up. That's right. Juliet, I'm going to put you in charge of it for a week. Be able to fluently say Zacks spelled backwards. Yeah, that's hard. You think about it. What you could have said was Zach spelled backwards. But no, no, no but I... $71 each. Hey, folks, I don't know. It's getting crazy out there trying to get Morgan dollars. I have a few peace dollars, but I know what I'm going to do next. Oh. I know people were calling about these earlier, but I couldn't get them up. Let's see what we got here. I, yeah, okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this Basari down. And I'm going to let you guys tell me. Here's what I got. I got this beautiful little girl. She was flying a heart-shaped balloon there. And she was having a fun day in the park. Patty, did you take your son to the park when he was little? Did you ever give him a little helium balloon? Yes. yes. Well, this little girl was at the park with her helium balloon, and Wilson chased her, and her balloon came loose. Now, this is an EM Zax. He just had a Las Vegas show, and look at this. He even wore one of one on the back. This is in uh, oil or an acrylic painting done by E.M. Zacks, 8,900 at his Las Vegas show. Look at that. He paints the frame, paints the background. He is a pop artist that is gaining steam so fast. Some of his originals this size, 11, 12,000. In Vegas, they were 8,900. Tell you what, I'm going to take one Zax, that beautiful little girl, and her balloon. E.M. Zax is a lot like Banksy. He doesn't disclose much about him. Nobody really knows where he lives. He, he's a native uh, L.A. guy, and, uh, but he moves around a lot. Tell you what, you got an $8,900 E.M. Zax here. Start at zero, $200 increments. Yeah. I'm trying to prove I did not put all of my customers to sleep. If I do, I'm going to make a tape and call it Berry Quill. It's just like Night Quill. Can't sleep? Put this tape in. Now, that is one of the coolest E.M. Zacks I've ever come across. Somebody might call. All right. Now, Wilson, I hate to do this. Come here. Put, 
I have to do it. I'm a little tired, but Matt, I am going to psychically will the bitters to call. Little kids, don't try this at home. I sent the message psychically over the camera. I am at zero right now. I just expended a lot of energy psychically summonsing a bid. And I'm at zero, but someone, that psychic blast I just gave is going to get out there. And anybody can open it, $200. This is an original EM Zax. We have 200 I can't buy it for anywhere near that. Nobody can. I don't even think E.M. Zacks, who no one knows where he lives, could even buy it for himself at that price. We're at 200 on E.M. Zacks. Hang on. Did you see how much energy I spent psychically sending that call out to people? I'm off. The roll of Morgans are gone. Here. And I'll tell you what. Yeah, I, don't, I think there's only, I don't know if there's 20 in there. And I'm at 400. I can't buy this. How much? 600. I psychically expended myself, Wilson. I am famished of psychic powers. They could get me right now. Matt, without my psychic force field, they could come in here and they could sushi me with a psychic sword. Sushi me with a psychic sword, yes. It's happened, not that I can ever prove it. All right, we are at 601 bitter. Oh, folks, I can't buy. Uh, whose idea was this to start at zero? Mine? What an idiot. All right, $600 going once. This is a $9,000 Zax, signed Zax. It is one of one, saying it's an original. It is stunning. All right. I get in trouble for auctioning too quick. I get in trouble for auctioning too fast. 800 has been bid. Folks, this is $9,000, Zax. I have three of them here, and this one is so impressive. Oh, you guys are killing me. I'm going to have to call in some more psychic help here. A thousand. thousand. And Wilson, I like you. Happy birthday again. But if I have to send out another psychic message, I'm going to have to give, like, the Vulcan mind melt. I'm going to have to pull your psychic energy out just for, I don't know, a day. <laughs> okay. $1,000, one bidder going once, going twice. Fair. Final warning. Sold. All right, folks. Now, let's see. I have five minutes left. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Look at Mr. Moneybags. Zach's original. Once again, it says one of one. 
Now, oh, it also says Coca Cola. And Zach's very mysterious, a lot like Banksy. Uh, Wilson doesn't have the psychic energy left if I drain him of all of his energy. I can't believe you are living a very healthy life. I got four minutes left. I'll tell you what. 800 to open, $200 increments. On, I only have two. This one is just stunning. 8900 they were selling for at the Las Vegas show. Now, that psychic sending messages, Matt, that took me many, many, I don't know, 12 minutes to think up. But tell your dad to be careful with it because it can drain you. If you do it correctly, and you want to be careful because I don't want to send a signal and be guilty of psychic malpractice. Thousand to open. Thousand to open. Thank you. We have a thousand. Psychic sending signals is a lot like astro traveling. Have you ever astro traveled? I have. You have? It was a big world in the 70s, wasn't it, to astro travel? All right, $1,000 going once. You have an Astros travel. Oh, Juliet, you're missing out. I can see why Romeo dumped you. Oh, my goodness, a woman had never Astros traveled. $1,000, what? Oh, I know, he's buried in her backyard, but I was trying to be kind to her. $1,000 going twice. Fair, final warning, sold. All right, what do I got, about two minutes left? Three? Two minutes. Hey, if anybody wants this last one, talk to Ashley. And yes, and Ashley, you seem to be doing well. I don't have to perform any psychic surgery on you. Okay, good. That can be tricky. Make Ashley an offer on this last one. And I want to thank you. I am going to be back next Wednesday night. I am working on an incredible collection of some Royos, uh, a couple other really cool items, and some really cool St. Gaudens. I'm talking some... Uh, Really cool dates on Saints, on Morgans, everything. Hey, we love you in Buford. I'm going to tell you this one last time. Because I have my psychic powers. Don't you kick that dog, Buford. How much time do I have left? Oh, I'm going to send. All right, Buford. All right, I hate to do this to you, Buford. Have we warned Buford not to hurt that dog for a while? Don't kick that dog. Don't kick that dog. We've done that for a while, right? All right, Buford, this is for you. I can barely stand up after that one. Buford felt that one. Oh, I, I said it. I, Buford, he could be uh, in a coma now. Oh, yeah, that was exhausting, Wilson. I mean, I just took all the energy. Hey, we love you folks. I'll be back next Wednesday. Give Ashley a call. If I did anything wrong, it's her fault. And I want to thank all of you. Take care. See you next week. How's Claire doing? How's what? Claire. Who? Uh, Mr. Ashley, how's Claire doing? Say what now? <laughs>